Big Tree Tech and BQ, one of the largest supplier of aftermarket printer parts. We're going to look at the SKR3 Easy next on the corner. Hey everyone, it's me Jeff. Welcome back to the corner. This time around, Big Tree Tech, or BQ, sent me an SKR3 Easy Driver. I'm gonna upgrade my SKR2 board with this SKR3. So I'm gonna look at this. I did do an unboxing and I forgot to turn my camera on. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm basically gonna show you the SKR, it comes with the SKR Easy Board, Ducky, USB cord. Now the cool thing about this is new for the SKR series is that they send you all sorts of JST connectors. So if you don't have a wire that fits, you can manufacture one. So I think that's really good. And I think that's a really cool thing that the manufacturers are starting to send you. However, it did not come with an SD card. So I guess there's a bit of a trade-off there as far as value goes, but I much rather have these because I got a ton of SD cards kicking around. So they also sent me a sleeve of their easy drivers. Now the easy drivers are super cool. If you look at the board here, so your regular drivers would fit here. Your easy drivers just fit here and they only fit one way. 40% of their problems they have with boards at BQ for customer service is the fact that people are putting the drivers in the wrong way and stuff. So this will eliminate that problem. The board is also capable of using your regular style drivers or the new easy drivers. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you a quick little history of boards here. This is the SKR 1.4 Turbo. As you can see, it's got the blade fuses on it. It has a USB and it has an SD card slot. It also has the same amount of drivers, which is the five. I turn this one around. This is the SK2 board. Notice how they added a USB stick here, but the blade fuses aren't on this board. They have the micro fuses. Now these are a pain in the butt to track down. So I'm glad with the SKR3, they reverted back to these blade style fuses. They also lost the USB port. Um, I either did or didn't use the USB port. It was kind of good to put a USB stick in to do prints, but I think we're fine with an SD card. So I think that's a good thing. If you look at the easy board, it's a little bit longer. But if you can see, this hole, this mounting bracket, and this mounting bracket, they're the same spacing on here. So any of your existing mounting brackets should work. But you'll just have to pay attention to the extra, looks like maybe an in length of the board. And that's to accommodate the easy drivers. So I'm gonna pop one of these easy drivers out. So you can kind of have a closer look. So the easy driver here, as you can see, has a heat sink built in and it wraps nicely around the whole driver. Now, you're gonna notice on this, let's focus, there's a small notch right here. And that just slides into the notch on the easy driver board. So I'll just install one right now so you can have a look at that. And that's it. I do like the fact that they're vertical and there's gaps between them. I think that's gonna do really good for airflow. And actually, if you look at these SD, um, these drivers here, the original Big Tree Tech 2209s that I have, I'm gonna just put one beside it for comparison. And you're gonna see the easy drivers actually have a bit of a lower profile. You see how it sticks over the top there? Yeah, because they're, they're visibly lower. So you get a bit more clearance if case clearance is the problem. And you can also mix and match. 
which again is a great feature because you're not just dedicated if you get one of these boards to using the easy drivers. You can mix and match your drivers if you have one blowout or whatever. So I think that's a really good feature too. So I'm just going to go and install all of these. And you want to make sure you're lined up straight and it should just press in. So there it is, the easy driver board. As you can see, there's lots of area in between for good case ventilation. So these drivers should remain much more cooler and much more consistent than the old style drivers, but you can still use the old style drivers as you see fit. I'm gonna be installing this today on, da, 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 let me pull this forward here. My Tronxy <laughs> that has gone through pretty much everything I can think of this poor printer has. Okay, so I've replaced the SKR2 with the SKR3 using the same mounting bracket. I'm simply just going to move the fan over to the actual case supplied mounting bracket, which is up at the top. I already have a video on showing you how to wire up an SKR board. Basically just follow your old leads and you're going to look at the layout on the GitHub and just take your time, make sure you have the right wire for everything, make sure you have the right polarity, that's really important, and just go slowly but surely until you figure out all the wiring. Once you're done the wiring, I'm going to show you my Marlin set. So if you head on over to the Big Tree Tech GitHub, you'll find the GitHub for the SKR3, which will also include a manual for the SKR3 Easy. I'll leave a link down below for this. Now, I really like that Big Tree Tech has a lot of information in their GitHub. As I say, we're going to install Marlin on this board, and it goes through a lot of the steps that you're going to need. So this, just this alone will get you up and running. But I'm going to walk you through a little bit with Visual Studio and how I set up my printer. So we're going to start with Marlin. So you're going to need Visual Studio open, which is right here. And the GitHub gives you everything that you need to do. You need to go into Platform I.O. and put in the chipset which is the STM32H743VX, Big Tree Tech. After that, you need to go into the config H file, and in config H, I will show you the changes I made. So your first change is you're going to change the board to the BTTSKRV30EZ, and then you're going to have serial port 1. You're going to change the baud rate to 115200. Serial port 2 is going to be a minus 1. Communication with the host. Serial port 3 is just going to be a 3. If you want to use that. Then we're going to go down to the drivers. You're going to go 2209s on X, Y, Z, and Z2, as well as your extruder, which is your EO. Now, if you're using your end stops, you're going to keep this to true. I am using my X axis with sensorless homing, so I need to change this to false. You're going to go through your default steps. On the Tronxy, it's 80-80-400, but I have a, a BQH2 extruder, and my E-steps are 922.7. I'm using a BL touch, so I'm going to define use probe for Z homing, and then define my BL touch. On my particular setup, my 
probe is 45 millimeters in front of my nozzle, so that's where the minus is. And my Z is down about three. I know it's a little bit more than that, but that's my, my safety, so I can fine tune it later. I also put a probing margin about 35 now because I have a, you might want to leave it at the default 10 because I have the linear rail that pushes, pushes my Z out a little bit. 35 seems to work for me. That's a number you might have to play around with. I am on direct drive right now as opposed to the Bowden feed of the original Tronxy. So I need this to be true for my invert, my extruder stepper motor size of my bed is 255 by 255 by 260. Now, I have this in here as the default for the Tronxy. Now, because I have a, a linear rail on there and my mount actually pushes it a little forward, the true size of my Y is probably about 240, but I can set that in the slicer. I'm gonna set it for bilinear bed leveling and I want to do four points. So four times four is 16 points. That's my, my happy place. That's in between quickness of speed and accuracy. I find that works quite well. I want to define my EEPROM settings and I'm going to change a little bit of my preheats. I like my PLA to be about 260. The default is 70. I find that's too hot for PLA. I want SD card support. That way I know I can save to my SD card. I prefer a speaker on, so I put that on as well. And then I'm using a uh, TFT35 from Big Tree Tech. So I need the full graphics smart controller. You'll have to look for what screen works for you. And that's it for my configuration H. Let's go to the configuration ADV dot H now. I'm going to do a few things here. I'm going to do some sensorless homing on my X axis. My Y axis I'll leave alone, but my Z axis I want to do sensorless homing. So when you do sensorless homing, I like to have the back off, which is basically when it's up against as far as it can to zero on the axis that you choose. In my case, it's the X. I don't want it to sit there and just vibrate and not do anything. I want it to back off a couple mils, then hit it. So that's what this is for. I also am going to do, because I have the dual Z axis, I'm going to do a dual stepper auto align. And I also, with my particular setting with the TFT screen, I want my SD card to be able to be read on the green because it has a slot for that. So I'm going to make sure this says LCD. If it doesn't, it will only read the onboard card. Now, as I said, I wanted my X to be sensorless homing. This defaults at eight. I find 40 is a pretty good value for me. I get a pretty good reading off of that. So that's what I'm gonna do. And that is pretty much it with stock Marlin. Oh, I did wanna say one thing with the Marlin firmware. And I should have said this at the very beginning. Now with the easy drivers, the Marlin 2.0 actually does not work. Uh, you're gonna get TMC connection errors with that. You need to upgrade to the bug fix. If you don't upgrade to the bug fix, like me, I was chasing my, my tail for a good week or so trying to figure this out. So make sure you have the bug fix, the 2.1.1, because the 2.0 or the 2.1 just does not work with these easy drivers. Once you're all said and done, you're gonna hit the check mark and you're gonna compile. Once you have compiled, you're gonna find where you're located. In my case, it's where I have it for the SKREZ. And you're gonna copy the bin file onto a micro SD card, place it into the printer, into the board itself at the back, on my case, Power it off and then power it back on. If you have a successful flash, you will see a firmware in all capitals file on your SD card. Then you are good to go. Now let's run some prints. 
And here we go with our sensorless homing that we set up on the X with the back off. And here's some high speed footage of the Z align. And then the bed leveling. And then we're going to start printing. Let's have a look at this Rockstar Dwarf here. He looks pretty good for the first run on the new board in this printer. I can tell I can do a few more tweaks to my slicer program, but other than that, very promising results. Where can you get an SKR3 easy board from? You can head over to the Big Tree Tech website. I'll leave a link down below. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. If you're cruising through the channel, click on that subscribe link. Give me a thumbs up if you like the video. Leave some comments down below if you had some experience with some Big Tree Tech products. And until next time, guys, keep on printing.